Welcome to this week's edition of Tours Baseball Player Line. I am Mike Dudas along with my co-host Nicholas Mecca. Hello, Nicholas. What's up? How's it going? I'm going great. We're right at the almost the start of spring break. Are you ready for spring break? I'm so ready. More baseball. That's what I was, was going to say. Even though it's spring break, that's just we're deep in the heart of baseball and we're just getting started in district play too so it's all good fun time so even yep. though school will be out it's it's baseball time right now too all right you want to introduce this week's two guests yes yeah, so we have a uh, senior pitcher and first baseman douglas lang with us and then we have junior christian reyes he is a pitcher and plays first base and i've played baseball with these two forever we actually won a seven-year-old uh, district all-star championship together. So that's kind of cool. And uh, I'm just glad to be with these guys. So if you look out in the field um, when you're playing, um, Douglas, he's one of the taller guys um, in the group. Has Douglas, Nicholas, just thinking back, has he always been that tall or did he all of a sudden just grow? <laughs> um, you know, he, he – he was always tall. I can always remember that, but Douglas was never this tall, but yeah. he's, he's always been one of the tallest people in the, in the group. So, yeah. All right, Douglas, start with you. So as Nicholas just said, you're a senior. How's your senior year going so far? Uh, it's going pretty good. It's online school. Big, big change from what school normally is, but it's going pretty good. Everyone always says, looking back, man, my senior year went by fast. Are you kind of feeling that way right now as we uh, hit spring break and you come back and it's not that much more school left? Yeah, it really did fly by. Like, it felt like yesterday that we were just starting practice, but we're ready for it. We're at spring break right now, so um, uh, and we're already, like, um, into our, our next to last six weeks, so we really only about nine weeks of actual school days left. Yeah. Take a look at your senior year. What's been your favorite class thus far? Uh, I would probably say engineering. Engineering has been my favorite. Just, engineering, who's that teacher in engineering? Uh, I have Ms. Pigavans, but Ms. Wayne's fine. Last few years, I was really made engineering a lot of fun. So, Ms. Pigavans this year, and then you've had um, Mr. Langevin in the past couple of years, correct? Yes. Why engineering? What makes engineering so interesting? Uh, I would say it's mostly hands-on stuff. We have a couple PowerPoints here and there, but most of the stuff hands-on. What type of hands-on stuff do you do? Um, you're just building all kinds of stuff, whatever, from airplanes to towers, all kinds of stuff. Really? So you do that in class? Yeah. Just uh, is it a lot of computer simulation type stuff? Um, um, that's more of like your freshman year you do all computer stuff and then the rest of the years is more building so more building hands-on that type of thing yeah and um so we've established engineering is your favorite class so which class that you really have to work the hardest at every single day to succeed um dual credit pre-cal with Ms. cox is pretty hard it's a lot of stuff to remember and you got to be on top of it a lot of formulas that type of thing you have a lot of stuff to remember, all kinds of formulas and stuff. And um, do you have a lot of tests in that class? Um, yeah, we do have a couple of tests each six weeks. So tests are the main things. A lot of formulas, that type of thing? Yeah. Using a calculator? Yep. You got to know how to use the calculator. Otherwise, you're not. Yeah. Like I've said before to some of the other guys who've talked about um, – their calculus classes and what have you. Thank God for the calculator, correct? Yes, I would not be able to do it without a calculator. Unlike in the old days where you didn't have a calculator, and can you imagine having to do all that by memory and longhand and that type of deal? Uh, I would definitely not be able to. Yeah. It's way too complicated. And um, what are your future plans after high school? Uh, after high school, I plan on taking a gap year and then going to college after my gap year. And I'm just hanging out, traveling a little bit, probably. And do, you, do you see any continued baseball in your future? Um, maybe if the chance comes up, but right now I'm just planning on going to college. Correct. All right. So let's move down to Christian. Hello, Christian. Good evening. 
Yeah, I'm good. How about yourself? Fine. Um, so Christian's a junior, and it was already established that um, – you're also a pitcher and play first base. So tell us about your junior year. How's your junior year going? Um, my junior year is going, it's going pretty decent. Um, first semester, I was struggling a little bit with classes, especially from the change of doing in person and then going to online. Uh, it's definitely a big change for me. And uh, I'm more of a person who can uh, learn, you know, face to face. So it's, it's definitely a little it was it was a little bit of a struggle but right now it's going pretty good it's pretty well for me and um what is your favorite class um my favorite class would have to be pre-calculus um it's it, the teacher miss guillory she she helps me she gives me all the time she can and yeah so you like you like whatever she's doing in her class to make it interesting and fun too. So it sounds like you're kind of a math guy. Um, not really big, uh, not really big on math, but, um, she definitely like helps me through, through a lot. And that's interesting too, because sometimes it may not be your most favorite class or easiest class, but sometimes it's the way the teacher teaches the class. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It makes it interesting. And what is your class that you have to work hard at every single day to succeed? Um, it would definitely be pre-cal. Yeah, pre-cal is a, it's a big class for me. So um, that's interesting because uh, you said your favorite class is that class and the one that you have to work hard every day to succeed is the same class too. Yeah, well, I have to work hard because, I mean, me, myself, I'm not, you know, I don't really know a lot of math. So um, the way she just teaches it to me and it just makes it a really fun class, but it's definitely something I have to put my mind into. Correct. And um, have you thought about your future after high school? I know you're coming up to the end of your junior year. Uh, yes, sir. So my plan is still, you know, baseball, baseball. I got one more year left to see if, you know, I get any college, colleges to look at look at me or any you know any scouts but definitely after if none of, if baseball does not work out then I'm gonna go to GC and do two years of criminal justice then go into the police academy after that police academy so that's interesting so what makes you interested in law enforcement um well I do have an I have an uncle well, I have two uncles that are that are sheriff deputies that are in the, you know, they work for uh, Galveston Sheriff. I think it's like county or something like that. But one of my uncles is in the forensics teams where they deal with like all like, you know, dead people or like dead bodies. And then my other uncle, he's just he's um, I believe he's a supervisor. And then I have my oldest brother who actually, he played baseball at Ball High, too. He's now just, he's on patrol over there for the Sheriff County's office. Well, that's interesting. Uh, to let you in a little secret with me, I've joined the Citizens Police Academy, so that's all going to be virtual for about a month, so um, that's going to be interesting, and I just did it because I just think that's just interesting, just something fun to do, and um, since it's virtual, um, why not, right? So. Yes, it's going to be interesting. And um, also, uh, to kind of let you in on another secret, um, you know, I do the video media stuff uh, at school, and I've been talking to a couple students. So next year, we're talking about putting a documentary together about um, following a police officer at night, kind of really? Galveston after dark, or what have you. So um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. And Nicholas, you know, Malu. So, you know, with him doing filmmaking, you know, it's going to be good. So, um, yeah. so we've been talking about that. So that may be something coming to some kind of the cop feel, you know, the, the cops show or what have you, you know, so um, that's going to be interesting. So, all right. So Christian, that's pretty, pretty neat that you're interested in law enforcement. So we may see you in a uniform um, uh, being part of blue, go blue. So um, there. congratulations on that idea. Thank you. All right. So I, I wanted to talk about to you guys one last thing about academics and then we'll hop into to baseball. So both um, Christian and Douglas, you've brought up about um, 
kind of the challenges within the past year of learning. So, you know, there's the online component that, you know, we all had to flip to unexpectedly last spring. And can you believe we're already hit, we're up against the anniversary um, this year, you know, right now of what happened to us last year. And um, I was kind of joking in class to some students, I go, I hate to say this, um, it's last year was when I said, all right, y'all have a good spring break. I'll see you in a week. And I didn't want to say that again this year because that was a jinx, you know, and I didn't. Yeah. Anyone <laughs> back to mind. So uh, anyway, so how do you all feel about um, what happened to us and this whole argument of online learning versus in-person learning? I mean, it's the obvious, you know, the obvious answer is, you know, for, is health and safety, but the, the component as you, a student, being able to uh, have all the tools necessary to learn. So let's talk about that real quick. So Douglas, we'll go back up to you and then we'll um, go back down to Christian. Yeah, so I definitely think the online school works a lot better for some people, not so good for some people. For me, it's, I don't really like it. I like having a good schedule, going to school, getting my work done at school, and then having free time or whatever. But now in online school, I've kind of adjusted to it, but it's all right. And Christian, what about you? Christian, are you there? Oh, looks like Christian's froze. We'll, we'll get him back in a second. Um, Nicholas, um, okay, there's Christian. Um, Christian, what about you? Um, how do you feel about the online component versus in person? Um, so I do sale, and the reason I do it is because I do have um, a couple of couple people in my family that actually have heart problems mm -hmm. so I think it's I think it's best for me to you know be home and do work however it is a bit of a struggle because I don't have the tool I, sometimes I do not have the tools necessary to do you know some of the work that is required mm -hmm. to be done so it's definitely a little bit of a struggle all right and Nicholas we don't want to leave you out of the conversation how do you feel about this whole argument debate of online versus in person uh, kind of same thing what Doug said, like, I actually loved, like, I didn't realize how much I liked going to school until this happened. So, you know, I wish I was in class um, tomorrow with my friends and doing work and I, I'm, I'm trying, I, I'm still, still trying to kind of get used to it. I have gotten used to online a little bit, but you know, it's just not the same. And uh, being a senior going through it. It's kind of hard, to be honest. Like, I went to see you uh, the other day before the game, Mr. Dudas, and, um, like, going through the halls is kind of a little hard because I'd be like, dang, I remember walking this way to go to this class, or dang, I remember stopping mm -hmm. every day to talk to this teacher right here. And it's just it, – it is sad, but um, it's, it's going to be all right. I'm getting through it. Do you guys feel social and emotionally you really need that um, in-person component? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would agree with that because I just, you know, the only social thing every day we get is baseball. And shout out to Coach Farrell for just uh, letting us be us at baseball and having our own time to talk to each other and uh, feel like kids again. So appreciate you, Coach. <laughs> Keeping things real, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nicholas, let's talk about these two guys baseball-wise. Let's start with Douglas. Yeah, so Dougie Lang, Douglas, um, how does it feel, man? One last ride, you know? How does it feel, this final this final stage we have together playing baseball? Uh, it feels a little crazy. I, I just think it went by really, really fast. It feels like yesterday we were the ones coming in the locker room looking up to the big guys, and now we're the big guys. I think I think that's crazy, man. We, we've played baseball together forever, bro. T-ball, yeah. ever. Yeah forever yeah you know we've always been brothers and always been by each other's side and another thing is like i've since i've ever moved into this house i don't know if you see all these pictures right here behind me but i don't know who it was i'm gonna say it's my mom i'm not really sure but somebody took pictures of me when i bunted this ball in uh our all-star game and it ended up being a home run i don't know if y'all remember that everybody threw it around and threw it past people and that those were like clips of everything of me button it and then all the way to home so i thought yeah. that was kind of cool that was back in little league yeah, yeah. Back in little, we were seven years old right there the famous yeah. bunt for a home run right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly so so you know doug from way back um t-ball correct 
Yeah, way back. Far back as I can even play probably, baseball. probably yeah. even before before T ball, Doug, because of Moody and everything. Actually, yeah. I mean, we've we've literally known each other forever. Like, he is my other brother. Yeah. And what about this other guy, Christian? Yeah, Poppy. We know we know Reyes for a long time, a long time. Yeah. Uh, like I said, played baseball with him forever too, uh, since T ball. And we've also been brothers forever. So it's good that I get to, you know, share this one last ride with everybody who is really family. So. And both guys um, have said that they, they um, both are pitchers and first basemen. So um, Doug, let's just start with you. So um, which position do you tend to play more pitcher or first base? I definitely play first a lot more. Kind of just pitch whenever they need me, but. Um, I'd rather play first too than pitcher, but whoever I need to be, I'll play there. For pitcher, do you, are are you a starter, or are you mainly the guy that just kind of comes in when coach tells you, "Hey, we need you to go over there and pitch"? Um, up until this year, I started, but this year I've kind of just gone in when he needs me as a reliever. How do you mentally, both of you guys, stay ready um, to pitch? Um, I think the biggest part is keeping your arm ready. Yeah. So if you think you're going to pitch, I wouldn't warm it up way too much. You kind of really got to take care of your arm, keeping your arm ready. Christian, um, I guess same question to you. Are you more um, the reliever guy come in, uh, you know, if you yeah. have to come in to stop something that's going on? Um, so you're yes, you're sir. more that type of pitcher too? Yes, sir. But how, how do you stay prepared? Um you know, if you're on the bench, um, you're not starting, and um, all of a sudden, coach says, "Go to the bullpen and warm up." So, how do you mentally stay ready? Um, of course, you know you always got to expect, you know, to pitch. You know, things don't always go to plan. We have three pitchers already planned out. Somebody could uh, could say their arm is hurting before the game, and you know, plans don't always go as they should. So, you definitely got to, you know, stay ready to go in whenever but one thing a couple things I do is I like to do a little bit of band exercises and maybe you know massage my arm with a massage gun and then I go into the bullpen throw a little bit and then go into the game whenever I'm needed yeah hey uh Reyes has this massage gun Mr. Dudas that you have to see all of us use it Reyes put us onto this 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 massage gun and we massage the heck out of our bodies with it and it's honestly one of the best things that we have that Ray has brought and has came up with because this has helped the team so much. Yeah. It's really crazy. We'll all be sore and hurt and we'll use it for about a good five minutes and feel great. So, so yeah. describe how it works. You, so you said it's a massage gun. Um, so it, it's like, a basically it has like different types of speeds and it has a like different types of heads that go on different you know different body parts but um it, it just basically keeps poking your you know your muscle or wherever you're sore and it just makes it makes it feel good after after a while yeah well we just did a commercial for them so they, they'll probably see a spike in sales for that <laughs> highly recommended i have a question for all three of you guys um so if some younger guys are watching this, just say um, eighth graders who are going to ball next year and, you know, they've played little league and select ball and that type of thing. So they really want to be a, a future TBOD guy. Um, what's your recommendation to them um, when they enter their freshman year and they want to join the program? So um, Nicholas, we'll start with you with that. So what's your big recommendation? Uh, I'll say definitely take it seriously. Don't take uh, anything for granted, of course, because you might or maybe think that you're the best player out there when really you're not. And there's so many people ahead of you that already have spots and you really need to work hard and uh, be dedicated as well if you really want to play at the next level. And um, yeah, man, just work hard, come to practice serious, take practice serious and uh, be a team player. Don't be don't be selfish, and just play play as a team. Is it is it every um, guy's dream when you enter the program? Uh, man, I want to be on varsity someday. I want to work hard, 
get out get out of JV and move up to uh, varsity. Um, Doug, is that every every guy's dream when they start the program? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, and you kind of just work your way up. I would say being a team player is the biggest part. Boja doesn't really play like superstar baseball. Not, not many of us are going to walk up and hit a home run every at bat. And so you kind of just got to do your own thing, play as a team, bunt someone over, do the little things. Yeah, exactly. Little things. That's a good That's a good description. Coach yeah. Turner always emphasizes um, do the little things perfect because they help you win ball games. And it's very true. If you can bunt, um, if you can move runners over, then you will be on varsity. Yeah, it's definitely helped us a lot in the past games, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, to Christian, you're a junior on varsity, too. Is this your first year on varsity? Uh, or? Uh, yes, sir. So, the past freshman and sophomore year, I was on JV. So, how did you feel when the coach said, all right, um, Christian, you're going to be on varsity this year? Um, it's definitely a big change from um, – you know, the type of playing skill that goes on, definitely, you know, like your hitting is definitely a, a big change of speed. You go from like 72 miles an hour to now you're seeing guys that are pitching like 89, 93, you know, up to there. So it's, it's definitely a big change. But, you know, you just got to be ready for all that. That's what you that's what you practice for. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that this year because I've watched a lot of JV ball, uh, just the quality of play, and then also the speed of pitching is quite different. Yes, sir. So, so I, I'm assuming it's probably a big adjustment for some of the hitters whenever they move up. And, you know, for a lot of guys, they'll probably think, well, I got this. I'm used to, you know, being the, the big star on JV and then varsity. It's, it's a big leap, correct? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's how I felt my sophomore year when I first played Texas City on varsity away. Um, I, I'm i not going to lie. I struck out a couple of times, but then I got I got my rhythm going and I hit a base hit. So I was I was really excited. That was when we had um, Darren Mirren, Coach Mirren on our on our team. Right. Uh, when I got to first base, first thing he said was, welcome to the ball club. And I was yeah. like, I was ecstatic. I was, that was it. I was like, that's all I needed to hear. And I'm like, I'm on go mode now. So, yeah, shout out to Coach Mirren. Appreciate you. Welcome to the big leagues, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, before we talk about um, the, our game tomorrow night, let's talk about our most recent one. So, you guys traveled up to Baytown Lee, correct? Yes, right. sir. So, what happened in that game? Um, I would say our, our hitting really stepped up. We don't normally put up 15 runs a game, but we did. And I felt like everyone was hitting. And someone well, I, was, I, I was at home with JV, and I was following you guys' game. A couple of people were texting me. So it was close for a while, and then all of a sudden, you all blew it open. So uh, how were you able to do that? Um, Nicholas, what happened um, um, from a tight game to all, all of a sudden, you, know, you just blew it open? Yeah, so um, they, uh, I think the first inning, they came out with two runs. So it was two to zero. And we were going into the second. So I was, I was the batter coming up. And I was like, all right, we got to get this rolling. And I got a base hit to uh, right field. Thankfully, it was a line drive that went like right over the second baseman's glove. And uh, then the batting order just kept going. And Douglas came up, and Douglas had his shot and scored me, actually, and he got the RBI off of that. And um, we just kept it rolling, man. You know, that's the, – the important thing is, is that our first half of, the, half of the guys need to keep it rolling. And then the last half of the guys of the lineup just keep it rolling. We just got to play as a team. And I think, you know, the other night we did, we had – how many hits do we have? About like, I think we had like 15 or something yeah, like, like 15 that. 15 hits, the most we've ever had. And yeah. forever, I, I don't know if I've had that many hits in a while. So, um, yeah, and we really focused on driving the ball the other way. Um, so, yeah. Do you feel sometimes in the game when you blow a game wide open and um, everyone's hitting the ball, it can be contagious, right? One one guy goes up and hits it and another guy, and then all of a sudden everyone does it, right? Yeah, exactly. All it, all it takes is one person. Yeah. One person to get it started and everybody gets hyped and then we just keep it rolling. So, but then on the flip side, sometimes in a tough game, it can be contagious the other way too, right? If, uh, 
and probably on the mental side too. So you got to keep everyone up, but you know, if everyone starts hanging their head, that can be contagious too. Correct. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, uh, I would like to say, you know, Doug and Reyes, uh, for sure are never ones to get down. Uh, I will always come in the dugout. Doug, before, when we get the third out on defense, Doug's always like, let's go. Come on, let's get these hits. And then Reyes is in the dugout being the the hype man and just hyping everybody up. So, you know, these two guys right here know how to, know to, ha know how, how to have good energy. I can say that. Yeah. You guys were talking about how important teamwork is. I know there was a um, good play, um, which we have a highlight of uh, from the last game, there was a steal at home. Yeah, there was. Um, we ran a play called cutthroat. Don't really run it that much. Don't even have time to happen this year, but it's probably one of our favorite, most exciting plays to run. Someone gives up an out. We're trying to give up an out to score one run. It works. So there was a runner at first, then third, correct? And so I guess the way to kind of make it work is the – uh, guy at first needs to um, run and try and steal, but kind of get caught up, hung up, and hopefully the other team will fall asleep when there's a runner at third. And um, so it looked like um, – who, who was the runner at third? Do, you, do you guys remember? Uh, I think it was Renard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Renard. I think the highlight, it just looked like it was no doubt. He was gone. Coach sent him, and then um, – yep. uh, Y'all got it. So it was a, a perfectly executed play. So, again, I guess that's um, an example of teamwork. Everything boom, boom has to work, right? Everyone has to be on, paying attention to make it work. Yeah, the runner on first has to fall, too. Right. They fall, they see man on the ground. They're going to go for you, not the other runner. And the guy at third um, running, stealing home, he, he has to take off running like it's no doubt, right? Don't, don't hesitate. I mean, you've already committed yourself. You got to go, right? Yeah. Make it work. So th those are those are fun plays to watch, especially when they work too, and everyone um, gets excited and whatever. And probably something that you guys work a lot in practice, but uh, yep. practice is a lot different than game situation. Making it work, correct? Yeah, we yeah. work on it every single day, and every you know, really no complaints on that because we use it. Like we use yeah. what we practice, and mm -hmm. I have to really. Like, I really appreciate Coach Farrell, like, really making us work hard at practice at the stuff that we will actually need and we will actually do. I feel like some other teams and some other coaches don't really do that, and you kind of see them just doing, like, like other things. But we really, really focus on game situations and scenarios so we can be successful. So that type of play when there's a runner at third and you want the guy to um, at third to steal home and uh, – a guy at first to do his thing. So to make it work, um, the runners, they really have to pay attention to signs too, correct? The, oh, especially yeah. the runner at first, right? Oh, yeah. He, uh, he's giving it to people who actually like really know the signs and he's, he's trusting those people to execute it because we can't have any mess ups on those because yeah. if, if the first bait, if the first, the guy on first doesn't do his job, then the runner on third gets out and we don't want that. Yeah. Cause if it's busted, then it's obviously someone missed a sign or, uh, was not paying attention, correct? Exactly, exactly. So how fun was the bus ride back at home, uh, coming back home uh, the other night? <laughs> we were hyped. We were hyped, I will not lie. But, you know, Coach Pearl always says, you know, stay focused and, you know, the next game is always the most important. So that's yeah. what we're just focusing on. And yeah. I remember seeing some highlights. It looked like Chris Orton had a big night too. He had a couple yeah. hits, correct? Yeah, he did. Yep. Shout out to Chris. And how, how great is it to have him back, correct, too? So yeah. he's back and ready to play and doing his thing. He stepped it up again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, finally he got his he got his rhythm going. That's what I told him. Like, I, I seriously told him, Mr. Dudas, in the dugout, he, he actually popped up twice in a row. And I yeah. said, Chris, dude, you're hitting the ball hard. Just keep hitting, just keep hitting it hard. It'll come. Keep hitting it hard. Next two at bats, hit the ball even harder and got what do you get? He got a triple and a he double. Got a triple think, and a double with yeah. with a lot of RBIs. Yeah. So shout out Chris for listening to your boy. I appreciate it. <laughs> and tell us about the let's set up the big game for tomorrow night. What's what's gonna happen tomorrow night? We play Manville at home, and it should be a pretty good game. 
What's yeah, the line on Manville? What, what are they telling you guys about Manville? Um, that the match is pretty much about even, and it's going to be whoever plays the best game, makes the less mistakes, is going to win. Just, I think we just need to not take them lightly and come out, you know, come out aggressive and just do the little things correct, make routine plays, and hit the ball like we did the other night. We'll, we'll be just fine. To finish things up, uh, Nicholas and I kind of like to throw a couple parting questions at our guests. So, Doug, we'll um, start with you. In one word, how would you describe Nicholas and Christian? Um, I would definitely describe Nick as a leader. He's always coming to practice. He's ready to go. Shows up for the game. He's always ready to go. He's leading the team, making sure everyone's ready to go. And I would say Christian is probably – I would put him as a great teammate. Because when you're on the field, you you're definitely hearing Reyes. When you're up to bat, you can pick out Reyes in the dugout. <laughs> what he's screaming for, you can hear Reyes when you're up to bat. So I'll say Reyes is a really, really good teammate. Christian, your turn. In one word, how would you describe Nicholas and Douglas? Um, <clears throat> so as Doug said, uh, Nick is definitely a leader. Like. If, if you don't make a – if you strike out or if you make a bad throw in the field and we come back in the dugout, he's definitely the one that's going to be there to, you know, lift your head up. He's definitely going to be the one to, to put his hand on your shoulder and tell you, you know, you got it next time. And um, Douglas, Douglas is a – Douglas is a very outgoing person. He definitely makes – he's a funny guy. He definitely <laughs> makes everything a lot, a lot better. You know, if you're having a bad day at, pra at practice – Talk to Doug, mess around with Doug, and he's going to mess with you back. It's just a fun time around him. Nicholas, how would you describe these guys in one word? Uh, I think I'd have to, honestly, I, I don't I don't want to say because Doug already said it and Ray has said it, but I would have to say Doug is definitely a leader. Um, I already said he was my brother, so don't really use that. But he's definitely a leader. Um, you know, being a senior – has a lot of pressure on you because you are the one that needs to really lead the team. And I feel like Douglas handles that very well. And when times get tough, Douglas will be out there telling everybody, let's go, let's do this. We can win this game. Everybody just stay in it, keep your heads up. And, you know, he performs great under pressure. So I really appreciate Doug for that one. Um, Reyes, man, Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just, I mean, he's just my boy. Like, Ray is, I would say, I would definitely say family. Um, Ray is always make sure if you're good, if you're okay, he's caring. Um, if you need something, he'll help you out. You know, he's just that guy that is really caring on the team. And I think that positive energy really helps a lot. It really helps my game um, because I can always go to Reyes and be like, dang, man, I didn't get that one. And he'll be like, it's all right, dude, let's go. Come on. You got this next one. And, you know, that really helps me a lot. It really helps everybody else. So I appreciate you, Ray. Douglas, what does um, TBOD mean to you? Um, tour baseball or die, it's kind of what we say. But I would say that it kind of like is our sign for a family. Basically doing, saying we'll do anything for the guy next to you on the field. And just Christian, ready. what about you? What does TBOD mean to you? Um. You know, it's it's definitely it's definitely a sign that we're a family. You know, we would do anything to win a game, do anything. You know, it's just baseball is just our thing. We we love to play it. Um, we love to be around each other, and yeah, it's just what it means to me. Chris, um, Nicholas, any parting comments as we wrap things up for this episode? No, man. Let's just go out tomorrow and let's get it. Sure. Let's get to work. Another sure. day in the office, right, boys? Let's just go. Sure. Go to work, all gas, no breaks, and um, let's perform for the island because we are playing home. So yes, sir. let's do good, guys. Sweet. Yeah, I think the weather is supposed to be okay tomorrow night. So Friday night, um, spring break. So I look for a big crowd tomorrow night. So uh, yes, let's sir. go out there and do it, and I think everything will fall into place. Guys, thank you for being a part of this episode. Um, we'll invite you back again. I know Nicholas and I, um, especially as the season goes on, um, we're going to have even more guests. And we'll probably have a reunion show as it um, at the end and get everyone on. How fun is that going to be when every we have about 
10, 15 squares all going at once. So that'll be, that'll be a crazy, that'll be a crazy show. So thank you for being a part of this. Um, much good luck. And um, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Thank you.